Survivor is back in Brazil in an incredible and harsh location. It's going to be extremely hard on them because of the heat. TV Guide Network is going deep behind the scenes to reveal all the twists and turns that are ahead this season. And any time we can keep the game changed up is good for us. Plus, from the military man and the millionaire, the model and the youngest player ever, we'll introduce you to the 16 castaways ready to be crowned sole survivor. I want to change the game. No, like this is for real. They'll probably think she doesn't need this, and I might not need it, but I want it. Being out here in the wild, there is a very good chance that I am going to die. And Jeff Probst gives us an exclusive tour of this season's Tribal Council. Plus, we've got your first look at one of the series' toughest challenges to date. <laughs> Survivor Token Sheen's preview starts right now. Everyone. Welcome to Survivor Token Sheen's Preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper from the last season in Gabon. We're here at the Rainforest Cafe in beautiful downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. Over the next hour, we'll be revealing everything you want to know about the new season, the twists, the contestants, the tribal council, and the challenges. The show is back in Brazil, but the new location is nothing like Survivor's last visit to the country. Far from the coastal paradise and urban environment of Rio de Janeiro lies the Tocantins region of Brazil. The mountainous desert area is a completely different world than the Amazon, which hosted season six of Survivor. The difference between the Brazilian highlands and the Amazon, I think, is that the Amazon is dark and sort of spooky, and there's a lot of energy forces happening. This is the desert. It's hot, and you have a lot of sand dunes and beautiful rivers with water clean enough that you can just drink straight out of. It's really one of those beautiful rivers I've ever seen in my entire life. And, and you know, North America is full of beautiful rivers and this one I think beats them. It's just absolutely stunning. This is a very open area and it's gonna be extremely hard on them because of the heat. It's a little bit unique for us. It's one of the first times we've really done sort of a highland location. Just a combination of how remote it is, how extreme the environment is, and how beautiful it is. It's just sort of perfect. It's a triple threat. The dry heat has been a major cause of concern for the production department. There have been a lot of fires in Brazil. Tribal Council was nearly burned down about five nights ago, and uh, it's something we're going to be fighting the whole time we're out here. We're trying to set a tone this season right off the bat about the importance of first impressions. And we've got an, an opening twist that's going to speak to that. This season's going to open up with a, about a four hour trek to their respective camps. But before they start on the trek, we're going to ask them to vote one person out of each tribe. And the words I'll use will speak to the notion that maybe they're out of the game, they're not sure. Somebody's going to get voted out of the tribe they're going to think it's a bad thing. What's actually going to happen is the rest of the tribe takes the trek, and they will get helicoptered to the camp. So they'll skip the whole trek. They will have about a four-hour head start. We're going to leave plenty of supplies to start building camp. We're also going to leave a clue to the location of a hidden immunity idol. You're not going to have enough time to do both. So the choice is going to be, do I try to change the first impression? by starting work on the camp and see if I can get back in the good graces, or do I just stay selfish and look for that idol and try to save myself at the first tribal council? And I think it's gonna set the tone for this season that you have to be aware of the social integration that is going on at all times. Exile Island is desolate. It is a big sand dune. This year, two people will go to Exile Island. The winning tribe will choose somebody from the losing tribe. That person will then choose somebody from the winning tribe. So there will always be two people out there. And when they get out there, they'll find two eggs, two choices. And they'll have to figure out amongst themselves who gets which one. They break them open, and inside one will be nothing. Inside the other will be a note that says, Here's a clue to the location of the hidden immunity idol, which nobody except them will know is back at their camp. And two, you also have power. You can decide to go back to your original tribe or you can mutiny and go back to the other tribe. So we're hoping to get some mutinies this season. Of course, you can't have the game without the contestants. And there are 16 new castaways in Brazil ready to take the prize. 
I love this group. It's the best cast I've seen in a long time. It is such a great cast. There's a couple of characters that you're gonna go, I cannot believe it. Where do they keep finding these people? One of the bigger characters this season is 53-year-old bus driver Sandy. I am a country girl and a tomboy. like to wear a dress every now and then, but I'm real comfortable in uh, shorts, a t-shirt, bathing suit. There isn't anything I won't do. I'm just so adventurous, and I mean, I just love action. I get excited over just like little things. So this is a big thing, so you can imagine. I mean, it's really hard to contain a lot of times. This grandmother of two from Kentucky is concerned about being the oldest contestant of the season. Mm, these are kids that could, you know, not much older than my grandson at 14. She doesn't think twice about cursing. I will not be saying nice ass to nobody. <laughs> it's effortless for her, and therefore it's kind of charming. But I don't know how she's going to get over the fact that she's the oldest woman out here, and they're going to see her as a liability. But from her saucy language right down to her tramp stamp, Sandy isn't your typical grandma. I had this beautiful tattoo made and tramp stamp incorporated into it. That's me. I got the tramp stamp, so. <laughs> I'm a big fan of, of testing yourself and, and becoming uh, weak and strong and weak and strong all over again. Out here, you know, you're braving the wildlife, the wild, people who are going to give you a hard time and, and all that. Texas boy Joe says he's not a fan of overly dramatic people, which could raise some issues in this game. Overly dramatic people, you know, more of just a pet peeve than anything. I think, you know, not to sound holier than thou, but I think some of those people have a lot to learn. So hopefully they'll learn some lessons out here. He's a good looking guy and he knows it. He looks like he'll be a threat in challenges. I think my weakness would be being overconfident and uh, not totally driving with the flow of the game and, and being a little bit headstrong at times. I think that would be my ultimate weakness, but we'll see. I mean, that could be a huge positive as well. I have big, big hopes for Joe. I get a lot of comparisons to Parvati always. What she did in Micronesia was genius. Like, she just sat back, let everybody do the dirty work for her. Um, do I think that that will work again? No. This hairstylist and makeup artist from Wisconsin is hoping the others underestimate her. If you want to think I'm a little princessy in the beginning, that's uh, fine with me. I'll let you think that. I'll let you think that, you know, maybe I'm not as tough as some of these people. I don't want to give too much too fast. She's a hairdresser with hair extensions. She's beautiful and has that appearance of maybe high maintenance. That was my first take on her. But spending a little more time with her, I actually think Erin is pretty tough. I think she's a pretty tough chick. I am a city boy 100%. I grew up in Los Angeles, I've lived in New York, and being out here in the wild, there is a very good chance that I am going to die. At first glance, corporate consultant and freelance writer Steven is not your most likely candidate for this game. My biggest fear in the game is tripping over myself during an early rewards challenge and thereby getting eliminated because I look like an idiot. This is a group of young, fit, good-looking people overall. Steven is a little bit on the outside of that. This 29-year-old Yale graduate does not plan on sharing his Ivy League background with his castmates. I do wear glasses, though, so that might look threatening to some people on an intellectual level. The glasses are terrifying. Hopefully, though, overall, I come off as just sort of average guy from city. No one to worry about. Just let him coast into, into the millionaire spot. Later in the show... Right off the bat, we have a nice opening challenge. It's one of the toughest ever on Survivor, and we'll give you a sneak peek. But up next, we'll reveal more of the castaways, including this military man who's already been through the horrors of Afghanistan. How will Survivor compare? It's all ahead right after the break. Welcome back to Survivor Token Sheen's Preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper. Before the break, you met some of the castaways hoping to make a big splash in Brazil. Now it's time for more, including a man who's already dealt with something much tougher than Survivor. We just spent 12 months in Afghanistan, so uh, we just got back in May of 08. It was kind of a tough time being away from home for that length of time, but uh, it was an experience, a lifetime experience. I may share some of my military background, but as far as my Afghanistan experience, maybe not. Some of them may be patriotic and it may help me, but some of them may look at that as a threat. They may kick me off early than I wanted to leave. 
As the oldest male contestant, this 49-year-old military man feels he might have to tone down his leadership qualities. I'm trying to be low-key, but if things not going quite the way we need them to go, I may have to voice my opinion. He's looking at how do I lift people up. And I think that kind of leadership, if people realize it, is really effective. Jerry would keep us all in the game longer. And I, if I were on a tribe with him, I would keep him. I like to kid around and play around with people and make them feel at ease instead of letting stress and stuff bother you. I hope Jerry lasts a long time, because man, seeing that smile is really nice. I was born in Panama City, Panama. Um, my, my mom was fairly young when she had me. Her and I are only 20 years apart. 27-year-old bartender Carolina should be okay going without necessities. Her earliest years were a struggle. I was born into poverty. We had an outhouse as a bathroom. We didn't have indoor plumbing. I didn't have those luxuries, you know, but that was normal to me. My mom, she made me a U.S. citizen, you know, and she really struggled her whole life to give me a better life. She's another person that I think you could look at and say, ah, oh, cute, pretty girl in the dress. Yeah, she's not long for the game. I wouldn't bet on it. There's a couple of people, yeah, that I'm just like, okay, no bueno. And then there's other ones that, you know, I really hope to create alliances with them, hope to gather that they're on my tribe. I need to bust my butt into the challenges and around camp. So in the beginning, no, I need to put my head down and need to work. Don't get me wrong, you'll definitely hear some stats. I wouldn't be me if there wasn't any. In high school, I played football, I was the quarterback, I played baseball, I played basketball. And pretty much any time I have the opportunity to go play a game, I'm in. Like, I want to go check that out. The game is not all Colorado native Brendan is checking out. As for the girls that I've seen in the, in the game, you know, there's a couple very pretty ones. And in terms of whether or not you flirt in order to get what you need, I think that's kind of a, you know, to be determined situation. I love camping, I love hiking, you know, and just kind of having to figure it out and not be given any tools to do it, to me, is just like an awesome challenge. It's like so fun. Brendan has already succeeded in one challenge in his life, business. When I was 23 years old, I started a business called Bare Naked. Uh, it was a healthy lifestyle brand. We made granolas, trail mixes, cereals, uh, and sold those products across the country. Brendan is another interesting story in that he's a multimillionaire coming into this game. The same qualities that help Brendan become so successful in business are the skills he'll utilize out here. The only concern I have is that people make a rash judgment based upon my past experience that impacts kind of how people vote very early in the game. Brendan could be out early, and if so, I'd say it's because he's rich. I'm definitely like ready for the elements of Brazil. <laughs> Sydney, I think a lot of people will think Sydney is probably the most beautiful woman this season, probably one of the most beautiful we've ever had. And the big question for her is if she can hack it. I get that a lot, unfortunately. So um, that's something I'm, I try to remember, I guess. But I mean, come on, really? You know, you don't want to be taken that way. I don't want to be perceived just of my looks. And that's, you know, what they're doing. Yet, 24-year-old model and design student Sydney might use her good looks to her advantage. I have a boyfriend who I'm 100% committed to and I love to death. But I told him, you know, like, this is why I'm out here. I'm out here to win a million dollars. So I'm gonna do a little bit of flirting with guys, with girls, you know? But Sydney isn't just a pretty face. Losing her sister in an auto accident gave her resilience and coping skills. It was definitely hard, so that inner strength that I built in myself was definitely something that's gonna help me with this game, I think. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm down. Coming up next, Jeff Probst takes us on an exclusive tour of this season's Tribal Council. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Survivor Token Sheen's Preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper. We're coming to you from the Rainforest Cafe in beautiful downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. I can tell you from experience that Tribal Councils are always uncomfortable and usually incredibly hot. And with the temperatures well over 100 degrees in Brazil, Tribal Council is a place the new cast will definitely want to avoid. Here's Jeff Probst with your first look at this season's Tribal Council. We have a very big and open Tribal Council and it is filled with a lot of uh, local work from artists. This, these are uh, kahankas, massive sort of totem pole looking things. Also these pots, again, look at the size of this. It's almost as big as I am. And then beautiful headdresses from a local tribe. 
This is where the survivors sit at Tribal Council. Never a good time coming to Tribal Council, but at least it's beautiful. Great story about building Tribal Council this year. We tried three times. We had location one and we lost it. We had location two, which we were already up and building. We lost that location. Now we're here and it's beautiful. And here's the kicker. That second location where we wanted Tribal Council to be burned down. So everything worked out for the best. And this is the area where we read the votes. At this table here, again, carved locally for us. If you take a look at these torches, all based on local tribal design, even the roof of Tribal Council, 3,000 pieces of thatch, all cut right from around this area. And the best part of all, this snuffer for Survivor Token Chains is all made locally. Everything's indigenous this season, and best of all, it works. That's brutal, and I love it. And this is where the vote happens. And if you've watched any of these behind the scenes on TV Guide before, you know that I love this spot because over my shoulder are the survivors. The pen is always cool, it looks like a stick. I have something that I need to do that I've never done before. For all the people I voted out, this is payback. I'm voting myself out. Thanks for having me. Time for me to go. See ya. Up next. I get along really well with people older than me. How will the youngest contestant ever fare in the game? Plus, we'll introduce you to the principal, the beauty queen, and the cattle rancher, all ready to take each other down for the crown. There's more Survivor Token Sheens preview ahead here on TV Guide Network, America's TV headquarters. Welcome back to Survivor Token Sheens Preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper from Survivor Gabon. Now it's time to meet more of this season's contestants, like this next guy who happens to be the youngest player ever in the game. It's pretty cool to be a, the answer to a trivia question right now. Youngest survivor ever, so that's pretty cool. If they think strategically, like this kid, he's too young to kind of manipulate people, to um, be smart about the game, you know, I feel like they're going to kind of overlook me, which gives me enough time, a couple tribal councils, a few weeks, whatever, to get my bearings, meet people, get relationships built, and then go from there. Honestly, I get along really well with people older than me. Spencer is somebody I really root for, and he's got a great attitude. 19-year-old Spencer has been a fan of Survivor for half of his life. I was 11 when I started watching, so 11, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, challenges, you got to win everything, and then you realize as you get older, it's more strategy and things like that. So the social aspect, the whole idea, really, except for the starving part. I'm not into not eating. I like to eat, so that will be a definite challenge for me. And you're physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, but you have to keep going. There's no other way. You can't quit. You can't. You just can't. I hope he calms down. He can overthink things. That's the problem with knowing the game so well, is you can get lost in your own strategy and forget what's happening around you. Because every season's different. This is gonna test me like, like no other for sure, and I am excited about it. To me, this is the absolute ultimate reality show, an ultimate game. 46-year-old Debbie has a daughter the same age as Spencer, and her job is perfect preparation for dealing with younger people. I am a middle school principal. I have 908 sixth and seventh grade students. I've been told that numerous times. I, I typically don't fit the principal stereotype. The kids all know who I am. If I'm bored, I may have roller skates on in the school. I mean, they know I'm goofy and silly, and I'm going to be me. I think Deborah's first impression will be critical. Do they see her as another older woman, or do they see her as a young, vibrant woman? And I think that'll spell a lot of her fate in this game. I'm little, but I'm really strong, and I hope that, you know, the tribe will see that quickly. This vivacious Alabama Middle School Principal of the Year says her mothering instincts will come out in the game. I want to be a nurturer because some of these kids are younger than my daughter, I'm sure. I wear multiple hats every day in my job, so I feel like I could wear multiple hats in this game. Honestly, like, I have to catch myself because I'm like, what in the hell am I doing? Like, what, you know? 31-year-old Candace is a former lawyer who has also done some acting on shows such as Entourage and films like Beer Fest. And she was also Miss Ohio USA in 2003. I think from a competition perspective, I think that competing as Miss Ohio and um, as an athlete 
my whole life, I bring just a strong sense of self to competition. The slightest sign of arrogance or cockiness like can be, you know, catapulted into some like huge campaign against you, you know, in a split second and you don't even see it coming. So of course I'm worried about that. I'm gonna try to cater my strategy to each individual. With men in general, obviously there's a little flirtation. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing to do it with the women too. That's just me. Candace is one of the few people off the bat that I think is in trouble. I like her. I like her spunk. And she's actually an extremely nice person. But I think it's going to overwhelm her. I manage a black Angus cattle farm in Mobile, Alabama. I think being a farmer and being outdoors has helped me a lot, especially uh, I'm accustomed to rivers and outdoors, hot weather. You know, South Alabama gets very humid and hot. This guy runs a ranch. This young guy runs a ranch, and he's charming, and he's clearly a cowboy. This Southern charmer was the first in his family to earn a bachelor's degree, but he plans on playing the innocent country boy in the game. If they think I'm dumb, they'll underestimate me, and that's, that's when you got the element of surprise, you already got the upper hand. I'll definitely play the Southern gentleman. It's, it's in my nature. I won't be able to help it, really. And there are some pretty girls, and I'm sure I'll be flirting with them. Uh, and if I can get them flirting with me, that's what, that's what I need to happen. Maybe he'll find himself a wife out here. I don't know, but I like him. Later. Tyson is a villain, for sure. How will this pro cyclist from Utah stack up against other memorable survivor bad guys? But straight ahead, we'll go behind the scenes with a man who gets up close and personal with the cast every season. That and more is ahead when Survivor Token Sheen's preview returns. Welcome back to Survivor Token Teens Preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper from Survivor Gabon. During my season, Survivor started shooting in HD, and they're filming this season in high def as well, which gives the art department some extra work. But this talented group of artists is always up for the task. It's not the Brazil that everyone sort of thinks about when they think about Brazil, which is the Amazon or Rio and the beach. This is very desert-like, very arid. But the Brazilian highlands proved to be more than just a barren setting for Survivor's art department. Very blue skies. Aesthetically, it's gorgeous. Lots of really great colors visually. It's really mostly the Indian, the indigenous tribes around here that we're going to be trying to factor into the, to the look. There's six main tribes that live in token chains. We've been in direct relationships with them, buying props off them, feather headdresses, a lot of photographic reference materials. Challenge-wise, we'll do a lot of dressing. Or be, you'll see a lot of feathers, a lot of bright colours. And behind me, we've got some of the stair treads for the opening challenge, just getting a final coat of paint before final rehearsal tomorrow. For Tribal Council this season, we've sort of had to adapt the local architecture or the indigenous architecture to suit our shooting needs but it'll be very indigenous as far as its dressing and the, all the materials used to build it. And the dressing will be bought actually from one of the tribes that makes its living from exporting these, these goods. The Survivor Art Department has plenty of help after picking up a few members along the way. Our art department's a pretty eclectic bunch. Myself and Jesse, the production designers, we're from Australia and probably half of our crew are from basically our home area. Uh, then we have a number of guys from the States. We've got a few guys from England from Uruguay, from Tahiti, basically every location we've been to, we've picked up someone who's been a great scenic artist or a great builder. They become a big part of our team and our family and move with us to the next location. And then we probably have 20 or so assistants to scenics, welders, carpenters working in the workshop. And then we have a large contingent of translators. There's about 65 to 70 of us usually at any one time all over the place. But getting the supplies there wasn't exactly easy. Setting up here in Brazil was quite difficult, especially after being in uh, Africa. Uh, shipping was difficult to say the least. A lot of trucking companies didn't want to truck things out here because the road's too rough. It's been a push, but um, luckily it's come together and it's going to be a great show. Someone else who really defines the look of Survivor is the staff photographer, who's been a big part of the game for all 18 seasons. I've been on every Survivor there has been. The man responsible for capturing all the pivotal moments and the game's contestants on celluloid is Monty Brenton, CBS's in-house photographer for Survivor. Basically, once the game starts, I'm the guy that basically covers the game at the tribe camps, 
at the challenges. I also go to tribal council. My photographs are the one that you see in the websites, sometimes in the show, in your local newspaper or magazines that you may read. You get up early, you get to the camps, they're just waking up, you follow them around all day. Then there's usually a challenge, you cover the challenge. I have an office and I'll basically download and back up any photos I've taken. When there's days where there's tribal council, it's even longer because tribal council goes to about 9 p.m. at night and you started your day at six in the morning. It's pretty exhausting. The one thing that I've really enjoyed about Survivor is that it has taken me around the world and let me see different cultures and different places. And a survivor he is, for Monty is no stranger to danger on set. Since I've been at Survivor, I've had a few incidents. Season five, I almost crashed an helicopter. Season seven, I was attacked by a pelican about a half a mile offshore. Sometimes you feel like you are a survivor too. He isn't the only one that takes a physical beating. The harsh environment also takes a toll on his equipment. A lot of these places that we go to are very humid, and water collects in the cameras and makes them start to do weird things, like just run, or they won't turn off, or they don't work at all. Even after 18 seasons of working on the show, the experienced photog still can't predict who will come out the winner. The guy I always pick is, is like the second or third kicked off. When you first meet them, you have your initial opinion about them. Oh, I like them, I don't like them. And then when they're out there for, say, a week or so, those opinions change totally. You just never can tell. Coming up. I'm going to have to work that whole SWV recognition into my game plan and play it for what it's worth. It's just another obstacle for Taj. Will the celeb status of this singer help or hurt her chances? We'll reveal the rest of the contestants just ahead when Survivor Token Sheen's preview returns here on TV Guide Network, America's TV headquarters. The game is always so extreme that injuries are bound to happen. So Survivor has a top-notch team to deal with any mishaps. One thing I don't think a lot of people realize is we have a full medical team out here. Two doctors, two paramedics, we have an evacuation plan, we have a helicopter to chopper people out. We run a pretty decent MASH unit out here. And the reason it's important is we have a crew of 400 with our locals. We need to know that we can get people out of here in a hurry, and we can. One of the most impressive things is when something does happen, how quickly the plan of action is put into effect. We have saved lives out here. That's no exaggeration. We have had a couple of situations where had we not had a good plan, we would have lost somebody, and we didn't. There's more Survivor Token Sheens preview coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Survivor Token Sheens preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper coming to you from the Rainforest Cafe in beautiful downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. Now it's time to meet the last few castaways and they are an interesting bunch. Like this next woman who is a Grammy nominated singer who sold over six million records. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I run a nonprofit organization for women of domestic violence. I'm still in a group, I sing with uh, Sisters with Voices, SWV. I'm a trick of all trades. <laughs> We've known each other since we were 12 and 13 years old. We've been SWV since 90, and this is what, 08? So 18 years. Taj is married to former NFL running back Eddie George. I'm so not the typical NFL wife. I've never fit into that genre. I'm a tomboy. I'm, I'm rough and rugged. I'm the man in my house half the time. So for them to underestimate me will work to my advantage. I'm like the biggest girl here weight-wise. So they'll probably think I'm slow and fat, but I got muscle and all this fat. Just because I had a baby don't mean I'm slow. If people find out her history and her family and know that she's married to a former Heisman, an NFL player, they may make an assessment that she's got everything. She's got a man who loves her, money in the bank, kids, get out of here. There have been a couple people that have recognized me, so that's going to have to play into my game plan, and I know that they'll probably think she doesn't need this, and I might not need it, but I want it. <laughs> I'm selfish, I want it. The funniest thing is, I've been in a, a very popular group, my husband is very successful, but I've never had a million dollars before in my life. So to hold up a million dollar check in my name, I think is amazing, and I want to do that. I want to change the game. 
37-year-old Ben has coached a woman's college soccer team for 13 years and has a lot of life experiences, which should come in handy on Survivor. I set the record uh, for the longest solo kayak expedition. I spent six months and over 6,000 miles going from San Felipe, Baja, California, all the way down to uh, Colombia, South America. I was captured by natives in the Amazon. I was held against my will for a week. I've had several shark attacks. I've been bitten by a piranha. I have the most visible scars here um, on my hand. That's from a shark that, a tiger shark that was actually got a hold of my paddle. Ben, or coach as he likes to go by, is one of the most fascinating guys we've ever put on the show. Absolutely fascinating. He's incredibly arrogant. He's almost Richard Hatch arrogant, where he's so arrogant that you're kind of fascinated by it. I'm not repulsed by it. I'm actually quite intrigued to see what he can do. I definitely know that I come across as being arrogant and cocky, but I don't, I don't think I am. I'm very down to earth. I feel that Survivor has become survival of the weakest, survival of the manipulative, survivor of the ignoble. I want my character to show in this game. I want my honesty and my integrity that doesn't have a price on it. So for me, it's about playing the game in that way and having a final four and even a final eight of strong, tough competitors. That's what I want. I'm definitely going to dish the dirt. You better believe that. 23-year-old Sierra is a fashion student and model, a career she's had since she moved out at age 15. I moved to Taiwan and I was doing schooling just over the internet. It really helped me grow up really fast. But modeling didn't prepare her for all the aspects of Survivor, like the bugs. No, I didn't do top model where they stuck a tarantula on my face. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not used to that. I'm a female with balls. All my friends are, are guys. I mean, I get along with a small selection of girls. I just, I think because girls can't kick it. They're just too busy doing their hair and stuff. I think she brings a lot to Survivor. She's got a lippy attitude. She's a hard worker. She's spunky. I always wanted to see CC stuff. So that's, it's been my like life goal, but this is probably to the extreme. I could play a flirtatious game. I, mean, I have a girlfriend at home, so as far as um, gratuitous sex scenes, you're not going to see any from me. Last but not least is pro cyclist Tyson. I definitely will downplay that I was a professional cyclist. Just, yeah, seemed like an average guy trying to make his million. I lived in the Philippines for two years as a Mormon missionary. The climate is very similar, I think, with the heat and uh, kind of strange foods and things like that. Despite his missionary past, Tyson says he'll have no problem with manipulating people, like one of his favorite castaways, Johnny Fairplay. He's famous for lying pretty well. It's not a conflict for me. This is a game to me, and that's part of the game. And so to play it well, I think you have to. Tyson is a villain, for sure. Tyson is the kind of villain, though, that you love to hate, and you're not going to want him to go home. He's a much better version of Ace. I definitely want to make the money work for me so that I can avoid uh, hard manual labor. I'm too pretty to do that. Up next, we've got your exclusive sneak peek at one of the most grueling challenges in Survivor history. Don't go anywhere. Survivor Token Chains preview will be right back. Welcome back to Survivor Token Chains preview. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper from Survivor Gabon. It's the moment you've been waiting for, your first look at one of the most intense and grueling challenges to take place on Survivor. But it's nothing I couldn't handle. Check it out. We have some big challenges. Right off the bat, we have a nice opening challenge. Second episode, we have a brawl in the water, which is going to be a blast. We like to play with the names of our challenges. This one's called a river run through it. Our first challenge we tried to make fairly epic, using the river, using the beach. Members of the press tested out the first challenge against the fearsome Survivor Dream Team. We set up a tower uh, with a staircase set into it. On go, six of our players would run up and over a series of sand hills out into the river. Then they go to the river, grab a raft with some wooden planks, they're puzzle planks, bring them back to shore. Once they have both rafts back to shore, they untie the planks, race back to the staircase, where the two players left behind use them and try to figure out where they fit into the staircase. Once they've got the 16 pieces in, they get to the top, two other players have to go do a table maze. 
and uh, we came up with these little uh, handles with rope to move a peg through a table maze. The first tribe that got out of the table maze and Razor Flag wins. Yeah, the press won the challenge this time, which uh, in my heart I knew they could do, but it cost me a couple of cases of beer with the grips because I was betting on my dream team to take it. You guys came up and uh, kicked our ass, so I uh, gotta give you your due. After the triumphant press celebrated, it was time for the castaways to duke it out. Here's your sneak peek at the first challenge of Survivor Token Cheese. That's it for Survivor Token Cheens preview. Be sure to tune in to CBS Thursdays at 8 p.m. 7 central for this exciting new season. Thanks to the Rainforest Cafe here in downtown Disney for providing us with such a great location. And thanks for watching. I'm Jessica Sugar Kuiper, and I'll see you soon.